guys, how's it going? It's pretty cold outside and I would class the roads as being a bit slippery. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to answer quite a few emails, questions I get on YouTube, etc., about the safety of a rear wheel drive car like my M135 behind me. A lot of people are concerned about all the power goes through the rear wheels and that the car is going to be uncontrollable in winter conditions. There's nothing really dangerous about a modern rear wheel driven car. All modern cars come with loads of safety devices, you know, such as traction control. More importantly, in this instance, stability control that basically stops the car from getting out of line too much. Now, rear wheel drive cars really appeal to me and people that love driving because they are playful on the limit and you can get the back end to step out. When you start a car up like my BMW behind me, they always start up in a default mode with everything on. So all the traction control devices on, the traction control turned right up, the stability control turned right up. Hopefully today we're going to go out and just experiment with that and I'm going to demonstrate that even putting your foot flat on the accelerator in the middle of a corner or a roundabout will not entice the rear end to come around. I just want to really demonstrate that rear wheel driven cars, although they don't offer the grip and performance of all wheel drive cars in the winter, they certainly have enough and are very safe unless you decide to turn everything off. And at that point, the car obviously does become very, very playful and dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Now, cars like the BMW, in fact, throughout the whole range, you've got sort of a halfway setting that allows you to play a bit. So it gives you a bit of slip, gives you a bit of, you know, turns the traction control down slightly, turns the stability control down slightly. So you can get a bit out of shape, but if it senses that you're gonna get too out, too out of shape or if it senses that you've kind of run out of talent, it will rein things back and hopefully get you back pointing in a, in a, straight, in a straight direction. Let's see what happens and hopefully I can demonstrate that and it will entice some of you guys that are a bit unsure of buying a rear wheel drive car because of these reasons um, to go out and at least try one or maybe go and buy one. To me, the most important thing about looking after any type of car, whether it's a brand new car or whether it's a classic car, is just making sure that everything's warm. So the first, in this sort of weather, what we're at zero, sorry, one degrees today, this sort of weather, you really need to drive the car for six to eight minutes in order for the engine to get anywhere near sort of proper operating temperature. The engine and the running gear should be pretty much up to temperature now. I can see on my display in front of me, which is really cool. You get this on, I think, all the LCI M135, 235s, etc. You can see the not only the pressure of all the tyres, but you can see the temperature of all the tyres, which is pretty cool. So I can see one rear is at one degrees, the other one's at two, and both the fronts are at two. Can you believe it? For once, I was hoping it would be a bit wet today so that I could demonstrate this a bit clearer and easier but trust me when it's close to zero degrees it almost mimics the surface and grip levels of being wet or damp because the tires the rubber compound itself is so hard right so we're coming up to this roundabout here I'm in comfort I've just started the car I haven't turned any traction control or stability control off so we're just going to turn right here I'm going to turn the car in and then put my foot on the floor now so foot's on the floor Nothing, as you can see, I didn't even have to correct the wheel or anything there. Not one bit. I could feel the traction control and the stability kicking in, sort of holding all the power back. Again, we're coming into a bit of a nicer, tighter right-hander this time. We'll do the same thing. So second gear, plenty of power there because I'm up around two and a half, three thousand revs. I'll pitch it in and put my foot on the floor. Now, foot on the floor. Foot on the floor, foot on the floor. Again. And I can feel it, it's pulling back, pulling back, pulling back that whole time. Keeping the car where it should be, 
you know, keeping the steering angle exactly where it was. So if I was the biggest amateur in the world there, there's no way in a million years that the car would get out of control. Anyone that could drive half decent, decently would understand, you know, to counteract or to steer into the skid. But I'm trying to demonstrate that rear wheel driven modern cars are completely foolproof if you have everything switched on. So we'll do a full loop here. Let's see if we can demonstrate this. So second gear, truck in front of me, second gear. And right, foot on the floor, watch this. Foot on the floor, foot on the floor. And I actually get some dreaded understeer through there, which this car never gives. So that just shows you, and even then, it was a very controllable understeer, and that's exactly what you'd get in an all-wheel drive car or a front-wheel drive car. So with all the traction aids turned on, this car is as safe as can be, it really is. There's, it's no different to an all-wheel drive car, aside from the fact that it doesn't get up and go like an all-wheel drive car would in a roundabout, into second. Come in here. Turn in, let's hope these cars see me. Have they seen me? Yes, and this one. Okay, now foot on the floor. It's on the floor, it's on the floor, on the floor, on the floor. And now it's getting grip. You can hear the engine note and off we go. Gotta love this car. Ah, oh, it's just, it's just brilliant. I know it's been replaced by the 140, which is even better, but God, these cars are good. Now, Let's knock that back into Sport Plus. So now we've got uh, dynamic traction control engaged. So we've got a bit of slip. We've got a sharper throttle, sharper chassis as well. So it should step out a bit now when we go through here. Let's just um, put my foot down. Yeah, there you go. Really nicely, actually. That was. It's a very nice controlled skid when you've got Sport Plus on. You've got to have your wits about you. You've got to sort of catch the skid because it will sort of get out of control and you could probably put the car into a sideways, not spin, but it'll probably end up stalled across the side of a road or something. But uh, yes, yeah, so the Sport Plus allows you to play. Obviously turning that completely off, turning the traction control and the stability control completely off, which you can do in all BMWs by just holding down the traction button for about five seconds, two, three, four, well, four seconds. And now that's everything off. I don't like to really turn everything off when I'm on a public road because I just don't think it's very responsible. And although I'm getting better at drifting and I can control the car pretty well, I wouldn't cast myself as a drifter and certainly not on a public road. I, that's something I wanna do this year. I wanna hire a big uh, space, a big plot of land and, and actually learn how to drift really well. Also drifting really well does depend very much on the car. Yes, it needs to be rear wheel driven, but it also really needs to have a limit slip diff on the back. That just makes the skid or the drift a lot easier to control. With a setup like this, where you've got the open diff, it's, it's a little bit sketchy and you really have to antagonize it to get it sideways. We've actually got some heat in the tires now, so the front, front left, it's up to 16 degrees, that's where we've been putting most of the most of the weight and pitching the car in. Front right is 11, and rear right is 12, and rear left is eight. The rear inside wheel picks up more heat than the outside wheel because with an open diff, it's the rear inside wheel that starts spinning. First gear. Let's see. <laughs> One more demonstration of the traction control being fully on, fully enabled, and the stability control. We'll go. We'll do a full loop in this roundabout in first gear, so maximum power. Okay, it's nice and empty, and foot on the floor. No correction or opposite lock there at all. I didn't need to. I was a bit nervous because it felt like I should and I had to but I didn't need to. I go on about my driving position a fair amount in my videos and it is something that's very important. Now I like to sit unnaturally close to the wheel, maybe not as close as some decent drivers, but you know, I can sort of 
my wrist is way past the top of the wheel or it's sitting on the wheel with my arms relaxed. So I've got a lot more control with the steering wheel when I need it. Put your foot on the accelerator with Sport Plus on. And the black, the back end does sort of, the back end does kind of come out, but in a very controllable, nice, smooth manner. Old M cars like the E36 M3 or that sort of era, sort of mid 90s, those cars had no traction control. They had no stability control. They took serious skills to drive on the limit and fast. This does, but with everything switched off, with everything switched on, you're safe. We'll come into here again. This, this roundabout gets you sideways at the hint of a throttle. So we're coming here, let's pitch it in right and put my foot on the accelerator, flat down. Nothing until it finds power and then shoots you out. Exactly the same as a front wheel drive or four wheel drive car would do, exactly the same. Anyway, that's my lesson for today, if you like. Demonstrating that modern rear wheel driven cars will not kill you if you leave all the traction control devices and the stability control devices switched on. Trust me, I was antagonizing this car then. I was really pushing it hard and it was just like no it didn't matter first gear second gear foot on the floor it just goes no it just pulls all that with strains all that power and make sure that you stay where the steering angle is pointing you really it doesn't give you any extra acceleration so you've got to correct the skid it doesn't give you too much less so the car feels like it's going to conk out it just gives you a nice constant amount of power that gets you through that corner and when you start straightening up again it fires you out when it finds grip it fires you out so yeah hopefully that was interesting i now need to go to the petrol station and fill this car back up with fuel because i've got absolutely nothing in it thanks a lot for watching this i really enjoy making these vlogs and i can see them sort of becoming a more common thing on my channel hopefully I mean, I've managed to knock out, what, three now in a week, so that's very good for me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting very good feedback on them, so that's great, and I will just keep doing them as and when. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Please give me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, bye.